Anthony, congratulations on Drift. Um, it was shown at Sundance last year, so we've had to wait a little while for it. I wondered how it felt for you to know that it's getting a cinema release at last and that it's going to be a release in the UK, because, of course, you lived here for quite a while. Yes, you know, like, um, you know, I, I would say the UK is where I, where I call home, you know, I miss it so much. I've, I've lived in London for 15 years and um, I'm really excited that the film is actually getting um, a theatrical release because I, I feel a film like Drift really needs to be experienced on the big screen because um, it is a very quiet film. It is a restrained film. It's a very, very delicate film, but there's so much detail and so much nuance in the film where in that darkened space and that quiet sort of um, space of a cinema, I think one would really um, get a lot emotionally out of, out of the film. Yeah, it, it allows you to concentrate, especially because it, it needs that concentration, doesn't it? I believe so, yes. Since that first outing for the film last year, the refugee crisis has got even worse and it's hardly out of the headlines. I wondered how re how relevant you feel that the film is now compared to how perhaps it was when you first decided to make it. Yeah, you know, like when, you know, when we were developing this film, you know, we developed it for a couple of years. I, I started this project in 2019 and we shot this film in 2021. Um, I think when we were all making this film, we all knew everyone uh, involved, you know, um, it really took an international village to make this film. We had producers, cars and actors from America, from the UK, from France, from Greece, um, you know, and it, and it took a whole international village to tell the story about displacement. But we knew that it was important, but more so than ever, I think, um, it's it's highly relevant and and sadly you know it's it's become I think more poignant than ever. You know we have two wars you know like uh, raging on you know in the world you know there's so much uh, displacement of of refugees um, and and I think this film ju doesn't just deal with you know like the refugee crisis you know as a whole but i think it deals with and it talks about the individual you know it talks about how do you deal with that loss of identity how do you rebuild a sense of identity you know how do you deal with um trauma how do you deal with the guilt of being the lone survivor in your family i think there's so much where you know we are not so much looking at just the politics of it um, or, um, you know, or looking at it on a macro level, you know, we're literally looking at it from the point of view of an individual. And I, I guess that's the only way um, I know to, to, to tell a story like that. And actually a number of your films do actually look at people who are outsiders in one way or another. And and indeed Jacqueline played by Cynthia Erivo in, in Drift is is another one. Why do you keep returning to this theme? It's it's a it's 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 a question I've been pondering a lot. It's something that I've been asking myself a lot. I feel like perhaps because I've been, you know, an outsider all my life. Um I grew up in Singapore. Um and, you know, I, you know, travel a lot in my life. You know, I did film school in Singapore and then I did film school in the UK. Um, and I stayed on for a long time. But, you know, and now I'm, I'm living in Hong Kong. But wherever I live, you know, I've always felt like I found a sense of friendship or community. But I've never really felt like, oh, I belong there or, you know, like... Um, or I've managed to really sort of plant my roots in. So I've always been sort of searching for a sense of identity. I feel like I'm just like Jacqueline and 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 Drift. You know, I'm constantly sort of drifting and and pondering the questions of who am I and where do I really belong and what I am about. And and I've come to a point where I realized that perhaps, perhaps I would never really find it. You know, and which is why um, I guess 
um, I always treasure very, very um, uh, deep sort of like bonds and relationships that I've managed to sort of develop um, with people that um, I've met um, perhaps, you know, just from a few days ago, you know, I, I would have, you know, a chat with a complete stranger for a few hours and all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's so much that I could sort of like connect with or relate to. And I, I could, and, 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 and I cherish those sort of like relationships, you know, I, I, I'm always quite surprised how, you know, a stranger sometimes could understand you so much more than perhaps your own family or your like, or your closest friend. Yes. You mentioned earlier on that it's actually a very quiet film. And indeed, when it comes to the dialogue, it, it's really quite lean and quite sparse. And in fact, Jacqueline doesn't actually speak for at least the first 10 minutes of, of the film. I wondered how much of a challenge this was for your actors, for, for Cynthia Erivo, obviously, but also Alia Shawkat as well. I think it's definitely a challenge. I, I would say it's probably the quietest film that Cynthia has been in, you know, and and the most nuanced and the most delicate performance. I, I would like to, to think that it's it's also like a career defining performance that she has in this film. Um and she had a line, she had one line um at the very start in the opening scene when um when you know she was looking at um a street store where there was a vendor selling sort of like wooden sculptures. But as we were editing the film, we decided to strip off that line and it became even more intriguing when the first 10 minutes, you're sort of watching, um, you're even wondering like, can she speak? You know, is she dumb? Is she mute? Um, um, has she, uh, you know, been silenced or whatever it is. But the moment she speaks, you're, you're utterly surprised that she's got this sort of like posh British accent and you wonder where is she from? Who is this person really? And and I think it it sort of peels away like an onion and slowly, you know, like her past unravels and and we understand so much about her history and her memories and and eventually we come to, you know, um understand you know, the core of the truth of her trauma and the truth of her pain and her suffering. I was very taken with the the opening shot of the film with the two footprints and the sand being slowly washed away by the sea. And for me, it, it kind of got to the heart of the film about how easy it can be to erase somebody, either literally or simply by ignoring them, was that what you intended? Yes, that was right. You know, I I remember that was a scene that I thought up um when we were scouting in Greece, and I knew I wanted um an opening sort of visual for the credits, but I had this strong idea. You know, one day at the beach, as I was just watching, um, the shoreline moving in and out, and. And I wanted to capture this, you know, like um, how one's identity um, is disappearing before your eyes, is being erased or being taken away. And, um, you know, it's, it feels like a very simple shot, but um, it was quite um, challenging to pull off. You know, I remember it was, this wasn't Cynthia, Cynthia's, feed it was one of our producers Salome you know like and I remember I had to literally hold her plant her feet in and then lift her out so that the camera could come in you know without us causing other footprints and and everything else was left to the sea because you know we couldn't control the waves and we we just had to wait and we had to do it again and again um and I think that that's very much my kind of cinema you know um you know, there is a certain simplicity, but, you know, in that gentleness and that restraint and that simplicity, but, you know, but hopefully we're, we're, we're telling a much more complex story.